I'm really excited about what's going on today. I mean, Flavio has done an amazing job of coming up with some very creative ideas using GS Gelato products. Um, and you're going to hear about that and, you know, see some demos on that as well. But also, you know, uh, Kelly Dykusen is going to be with us. So she's going to be talking about trends and what's going on in that whole segment of the industry, both frozen items and beverage. And um, even what I'm really excited to talk about, too, is savory applications with gelato, which I had no idea what that meant. Flavio brought that up uh, like a couple of months ago or maybe a half a year ago or whatever. And I'm like, what? talk to me about this thing. But it's totally cool. And you'll get to hear about it. Um, and then, you know, I'll bring it up again later, but anybody, you know, the members that are on that would like to get a sample kit of some of this product that's going to be shown today, um, we can send that out to you afterwards. So you'll get a link to that and, uh, and be able to get back to us on it. So joining us is Simona uh, Ferroni is the owner of GS Gelato. They're based in the Panhandle of Florida. Um, she's from Italy. And so the product obviously is very authentic, you know, uh, Italian. And Flavio, obviously, is he's a consultant with them, a business development consultant uh, with GS Gelato. We've got Stephanie Schultz is the marketing director, GS Gelato. So she's put together the uh, PowerPoint presentations in the deck that you'll see today uh, from their whole team. And Bryce um, Melchiori is uh, the director of food service. Um, so you'll see from them. And then, you know, Kelly Dykes, she's a um, senior account manager for Data Central, worked with us many times in the past. Happy to have you back as well. So that's the introductions. Let's go ahead and um, and start off. So I'll I'll go over to you, uh, Stephanie. As Kevin said, this is all of us: Simona, Bryce, me, and Flavio. Today we are going to uh, talk about the history of GS Gelato. Get let you get to know us a little bit. Uh, go over our products, our facility, which just had a big expansion. Uh, describe the difference between what gelato, sorbet, non-dairy are and how they differ from American ice cream. Um, and then we'll switch over to Kelly right in the middle to go over the trends, <laughs> followed by a demonstration that Flavio put together with some uh, recipes, uh, versatility and creativity using gelato, training and support, packaging options, and then we'll end with a question and answer. Uh, so with that, I will send it over to Simona. Thank you, Stephanie, and uh, welcome everybody. As Stephanie said, my name is Simona Faroni. I'm uh, one of the owners of GS Gelato. Uh, Guido and I moved from Italy in 1996. Actually, it was February 5th, so just a couple of days ago, and that marked our 28th year anniversary in the United States. We were young and we were crazy, and uh, um, you can see from the picture, I hardly recognize myself, but we moved from Italy without speaking one word of English, and we had this dream and goal, you know, and passion and to, to bring in authentic Italian gelato to the United States and to start producing it and eventually distribute it everywhere in the country. A lot of people called that crazy. A lot of people called us, uh, we didn't know what we were doing. And a lot of people were, were correct about that. But we had this dream and this goal and, and we just, uh, one step after another one, uh, we are here today and, and we're happy to, to tell the story. So um, we started with GS Gelato, nobody knew what gelato was. And uh, so I started going around with a little ice cream truck, uh, sampling product to the local chefs. Uh, pretty much there was no much uh, sales speech because I didn't speak English. Uh, it was just, you know, the product that was speaking for itself. We also opened a retail store in, in our area, and we are located in uh, Fort Walton Beach, Florida. In uh, 1998, we started uh, National Food Service Distribution. And thank you, Stephanie, for being very generous on the National uh, Food Service Distribution. But in reality, you know, it was just U.S. Food Montgomery Division in the South. We were going out and about uh, in the mission of education, um, educating people on what gelato was. Nobody knew what it was, but everybody, everybody really loved it. And our stores, our retail stores, our gelateria really helped us a lot in 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 with the with the work of um, uh, development of flavors and really understanding the the, the American taste at that time because it was very different from from where we were accustomed to in Italy. In 2005 and 2006, that's where we met uh, Flavio. 
Uh, so our company really changed as an opportunity that was given to us by Olive Garden, and that's how we met Flavio in 2005 and, and Flavio and his team. So that propelled the company in, into a very uh, different direction. At the time, we were manufacturing out of a, a probably 1,500 square feet uh, place, and, and we were very blessed uh, to have a company like Olive Garden really trust us and entrust us in, into this adventure of, of providing gelato to the entire chain. But we did it and we continued doing that for, for several years. And so that also helped us in 2008 to expand our production. Uh, so we moved from the few thousand square feet we had in downtown for Walton Beach into the facility that we have here uh, which at that time, uh, for the remodeling or, or when we remodeled, it was about you know, 26 to 30,000 square feet. Uh, 2009, uh, we introduced uh, gelato and sorbet uh, to the retail market. So again, one of uh, another milestone because uh, there was really not much gelato in, in the retail, like in the supermarket. And so that allowed us uh, to grow in, in, uh, this, in, in the retail. So we were doing food service. And, and also retail. One of the things that um, uh, started to unfold and transpire and to mold into what we are today is the fact that we started to do customized products for retail, uh, for uh, some famous uh, national chefs. And also we were doing private label for US Foods, for Olive Garden and for other chains. So I think that we started to wear the, the, the dress of a, of a tailor for, 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 for really customizing uh, products for, for our clients. And we grew and we grew. So then in 2014, uh, we expanded our facility. We uh, more on the equipment side. So we in, started with automation. We started with a little bit more uh, industrial or pro professional machines rather than doing everything by hand. So we, we really increased our production capacity. Um, the market evolved, uh, the consumer uh, taste evolved, everything evolved in, in the world. So we kept growing and in 2018, we really started seeing more of a um, vegan and non-dairy frozen desserts uh, blooming it was still very very early but you know that grew uh, grew a lot in 2019 uh, we doubled the production capacity all of our distribution was taken uh, by dot food so dot food today is one of our major distributor redistributors to to reach pretty much um, with our product everywhere uh, in the country and then there was covid uh, so it was covid for everybody so 2020 Everybody got slapped there for a second. We reacted very quickly. Uh, 2020, 2021 uh, were uh, incredibly busy year for, years for us because we really penetrated the uh, retail market into the private label uh, in, in a very, in a very incisive and massive way. Not only with gelato, but at that point where people, you know, felt that their health was at risk um, because of COVID, they realized, you know probably more than ever, that uh, food is very important to, to, to keep yourself healthy. And this is where there was the explosion also of plant-based and vegan products and non-dairy products. We're not just a gelato company, sorbet or, or frozen dessert, but we are also a, an R&D company. So we provide unmatched uh, services and custom formulation and, and creations with Guido, which uh, is my husband, and he leads the R&D department. And so Guido in 2023 was inducted uh, into the Private Label Hall of Fame for uh, innovation into, into the PLMA. So it was a great achievement uh, because also it does this uh, fantastic products. We started also uh, building our new facility. So from a few couple of thousand square feet, uh, we went into the 33,000 and then we grew and we had the storages. We were about, you know, 40, 50,000, and then we added another 25,000 square feet, and we got a certificate of, we obtained a certificate of, of the occupancy at the end of December. So now we're still finishing the final touches in assembling uh, shelves and things like that, but 
uh, our new facility is on about five acres. It's not production, it's mainly warehouse, so that to accommodate all of our ingredients and uh, packaging and also uh, frozen storage. So we keep growing. Uh, we're very happy to be here uh, today and to, to present our company. We're very grateful that we have this opportunity. Obviously, all of this cannot happen without a great quality program or without making sure that our products are safe for consumption. So back in 2008, nine, we became SQF uh, certified at that time. You know, it was in level, level one, level two, level three. Then it evolved into food safety and food quality. As a matter of fact, we are having an SQF audit uh, as we speak today, our yearly, yearly audit. So we're very proud of our uh, quality control program. I could go on, you know, for hours um, about our food safety and food quality and, you know, all the testing and, and the, the real um, attention and importance that we place in our environmental programs, in our allergen programs, in the finished product testing. So uh, I'm very proud of the fact that, that, that we put out very safe products. And so what, do, what does GS Gelato do today? Um, we do obviously gelato. Gelato is what uh, we started with, and this is uh, fundamentally, we are a gelato company. We make sorbetto. Um, that's sorbetto the Italian way though. Our sorbetto in Italy is not an icy product or, or a thick product. It's more of a very smooth and velvety uh, product made with water and, and sugar and natural stabilizers and a lot of fruit, about 40% of fruit. And then we are also in the non-dairies. And uh, the minis is part you know, of our pa packaging options, but we also package all these beautiful products into individual. The soft serve is another collection of, uh, of products that we manufacture, whether they are dairy or non-dairy. Um, I have to say that on the soft serve, we really excel in, in, in uh, specific formulation for specific customers because I don't think there is anybody out there that can uh, really customize the, the, the product as we do. Um, another uh, collection of products or line of products is the no sugar added. No sugar has become very important in the past couple of years. So again, we had to create products that were in the same line of quality and organoleptic components as all the other products that we manufacture. And then we also have some imported desserts. We have some a joint venture with a, with a company in Italy, and uh, we have some private label um, programs for, for these imported desserts, mainly uh, to the supermarket industry, but also some uh, through the food service. With gelato, you know, gelato typically is made with milk, very little cream. Uh, we use uh, also some uh, vegetable fat coming from coconut oil. In addition to the cream, we want to keep, you know, the, the, the fat animal down and it's light and, and is, is, is very rich, very creamy and very velvety. We still manufacture our gelato using our uh, authentic Italian equipment that not necessarily the ones that we were using back in 1996, but a little bit larger than that. And we feel that the fact that we, we are using uh, the same traditional methods that, that are used to make gelato in Italy is one of the great characteristics that make our product really very, very unique. Um, a sorbetto is made with fruit mainly, and so there is no dairy in the sorbetto. And like I said earlier, um, our products are very thin velvety, um, completely allergen free, completely fat free. We wanted to create these lines of products just by maintaining the richness and the smoothness of our gelato. The non dairy items we do oat, we do coconut milk, we do cashew. Uh, almond, pecan milk, so there's different types of, uh, of uh, base that we use to, 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 pr to produce um, all of these items. You might see some of on the shelf, this is not a fake uh, background, so these are some of the products that we produce um, in our facility, and we have different types of packaging, but that's for later on into this presentation. It says uh, allergy-free options. But also, I can see that you know you've got some you know peanut and other things in there too. So, is it just a major labeling thing you do to make sure people understand what's what? And 
Yes, yeah, so there is a call out. So every product, uh, obviously, you know, by FDA, because we follow the FDA regulations, anything that has allergen, it is written that it contains allergen. If there is no allergen, they would say allergen free. So we have, but also uh, we are able to sustain our claims, which is the most important thing, by testing our products continuously. So yeah. if we say that it's allergen free, I mean, the product has been tested for it and it's been tested on the line, you know, on the finished product. Very cool. From here, we're going to go to Kelly. All right. So before we start to get into talking about gelato trends specifically, I want to do a quick pause and refresher on our menu adoption cycle. So again, at Data Central, this is our framework for understanding trends, regardless of where they fall on the menu. Um, we know that trends start in its earliest stage at inception. This is typically where, where we're seeing things at fine dining restaurants. Uh, as it advances, it'll move into adoption where we're seeing it more progressive restaurants and chef driven fast casuals um, into proliferation and ubiquity where we're starting to see it pop at major chains. So your QSRs and your casual dining chains. We know that trends in the earlier stages tend to be things that drive excitement in a dish or on the menu and things in that later stage stages tend to be things that drive volume within a dish or on a menu. So it's this blend of the two that is that we call safe experimentation that is perfect for something like gelato. So if we take a, another look at this as well, another way to think about it is generationally and understanding who your target customer is, especially because we know that those younger consumers are looking for those earlier stage trends on them. They wanna explore, they want something new and different. They want something individual and something unique that they can't get everywhere else. Whereas those later stage trends tend to resonate with an older consumer. Those familiar favorites feel a little safer. Um, and are something that, again, there's space for them on the menu as well. We can look at uh, kind of dessert mega trends in general at a high level as well and place those along our mat curve, which as I was kind of thinking about gelato, these are interesting because gelato plays into essentially all of these different things, highlighting, you know, early stage, uh, new global frozen treats and modern custards, but even getting into some flavors. So incorporating perhaps some non new non alcoholic flavors, um, savory flavors, um, next level chocolate. So beyond your basic milk chocolate or seasonal flavors even, or even into something um, like savory, or even, you know, we talked a little bit earlier about diet specific um, as well, but also it plays on trends of kind of incorporating and mixing with other dessert formats, those mashups, um, as well as nostalgia is a huge, huge thing, I think. Um, especially now, which is especially resonates with that millennial consumer. Um, and gelato plays into that pretty perfectly. And we know that uh, these trends really resonate with operators as well. And it's something that they're looking into um, with about two in five operators telling us that they're looking to add more globally inspired desserts to their menus. Um, and as well as Instagrammable desserts. I do think we eat with our eyes first. So having high visual appeal is really important. Um, and just uh, about the same percentage, 37% of operators tell us they're interested in adding savory desserts to their offerings. And I know we have some interesting ones to look at later. If we look at our Mac for dessert varieties, we do see gelato fall into that proliferation stage. However, I think this plays really nicely. I think we look at kind of, again, um, some of the later stage, more ubiquitous ice cream and falling on the curve, but it also plays really well um, with some earlier stage desserts like affogato even, um, or even kind of as we're seeing it increasingly um, being used, uh, desserts um, formats becoming flavors. So constantly evolving, uh, gelato kind of sits in that sweet spot of proliferation where it's that perfect platform for it to experiment with. And if we look at menus, we can see this is the historical trend over time for how gelato appears on U.S. restaurant menus. Um, the gray line um, is the trend of menus overall. We see gelato appearing on 6% of all restaurant menus. Um, we know that it's higher at um, casual dining and especially at fine dining restaurants. Um, and we have seen it rebound um, pretty much across all segments since 2020 as well. And if we look at the projected future growth for gelato as well, it's projected to continue to grow across most segments over the next four years, but particularly at fine dining. Um, where it's projected to grow by 31% over the next four years. And we know gelato is something that, you know, maybe 20, 30 years ago, consumers weren't so familiar with, but they are now. We know 87% of our consumers tell us that they know what gelato is. 65% of consumers tell us that they've tried it before. 
seven percent of consumers report having it many times in the last past in the past month. And 57% of consumers tell us that they like or love gelato. Again, this is that great base for space experimentation because we know it's something that consumers love. And we know gelato especially resonates with millennials, Gen Z, and female consumers. So these are, again, those kind of more adventurous consumers who are looking for something different, something more um, premium and special than just your basic ice cream or perhaps even flavors that are elevated as well. And again, flavor is a great way to kind of take that basic and make it something unique that you can't get anywhere. And when we look at our dessert flavors uh, menu adoption cycle curve here, if we look at those earlier stages, we tend to see a lot of flavors that are uh, globally inspired in nature, um, that are spicy, that are savory, that are pulling from other parts of the menu, not traditionally found in desserts. And as we look at those later stages, we tend to see a lot of those familiar favorites those ubiquitous staples that everyone knows and loves, which are prime for a mashup. Taking some of those later stage flavors, combining it with an earlier stage one uh, flavor into that familiar gelato uh, format is something that could be really, really successful. And we'll look at how some operators are doing that now. And if we look at the kind of top gelato flavors that we're seeing on the menu, um, probably not surprising to see chocolate on top here on over half of all menus along with vanilla. But what's interesting when we look at this list is we do see a lot of these top flavors continuing to grow in popularity on menus, which is not something that we typically see across all categories. Um, so we are seeing some, again, some familiar favorite dessert flavors continuing growth like vanilla, salted caramel, um, but also a lot of uh, pistachio even, but a lot of fruit flavors as well. So even cherry, raspberry, and call outs for berry um, seeing um, growth over the past four years. And if we look at how it's brought um, onto the menu at major chains, I think one of the interesting things is um, if we talk about seasonality, we typically think, oh, hot weather, cold dessert, right? I don't think that's the case any longer. We're hearing from consumers that they more and more they're looking for um, frozen desserts, be it ice cream, um, gelato, sorbetto, sorbet, whatever, throughout the year. And we're seeing operators really respond to that demand as well. Um, so these are some from our... Um, launches and ratings data set that have been launched by major chains over the last uh, year that I thought were interesting. Um, so we'll start by talking about the Taco Bell Baja Blast Tropical Blast Tropical Lime Gelato, which is a mouthful of a name, um, but talk about leaning into kind of what that brand is known for with their ba signature Baja Blast drink and expanding that line. This is something that really resonates with consumers for uniqueness, um, for draw, meaning that you'd visit a restaurant just for that item and for value. Um, TCBY leaned into um, that summertime seasonal flavor with their watermelon sorbet frozen yogurt. Um, we saw Rita's Ice as well playing on some of that nostalgia um, with their cotton candy cloud nine gelati um, with that cotton candy flavor that everyone's familiar with from childhood, but also those busy candies that we all grew up with as well. Um, definitely getting a five star score for uniqueness from consumers that top rating in our database. Um, along with uh, Carvel's Dragon Fruit Lemonade Sorbet. So again, pulling from that non-elk beverage, uh, beverages that we're seeing starting to trend as well and pairing it with an earlier stage fruit flavor that many consumers may not be totally familiar with. Um, this is another one that really resonated with consumers on uniqueness as well. And when we look at what independent operators are doing, we're starting to see um, even more interesting things. So this talk about spin on dessert mashups, right? So taking something more traditional and putting its own spin on gelato. Um, so this is from Blendies in Thailand. Um, what's interesting about this one, it was offered around Halloween. So talk about Instagram, we'll talk about highly visual with the eyeball and it looks like raspberry sauce, they kind of set it in. So creating, taking that traditional French dessert and putting your own unique spin on it. As well as going savory, and, uh, talk about crossing day parts into breakfast with this truffle cheese waffle um, from 100 Acre Creamery in Singapore. Uh, so a waffle made with mozzarella cheese and topped with truffle oil and maple syrup uh, with pistachio gelato per uh, paired with it perfectly. Um, and even more savory, this asparagus gelato from Tear in Brooklyn. So. Um, 
made with asparagus gelato with white chocolate. And you can eat, they even call it that you can add tr traditional balsamic vinegar on top. So really kind of taking those authentic tastes um, from the main part of the menu and making it, putting a dessert spin on it. And I feel like we can't talk anything about cocktails or anything about beverages at all um, without talking about one of the hottest trends of the year and kind of the rebirth of the espresso martini. And we're now even seeing reinventions of the reinvention of the espresso martini. So this is from uh, the Beatrice Hotel in Providence. Um, this is the Hazy. This is their bourbon espresso martini um, served affogato style over homemade hazelnut gelato ice cubes. So interesting presentation, definitely kind of a more unique spin on that traditional cocktail, um, blurring many parts as well. Um, it's definitely kind of a more unique application for how we're seeing it. And increasingly what we're seeing is consumers are telling us, especially among that frozen space, so ice cream, frozen treats, um, that they're interested in, uh, in uh, trying more totally new and unique versions, classics with a twist, more so than when in comparison to other dessert categories like pie or pudding, where they do want more of those traditional versions. So this is a great way to use gelato as a way to create something that's a signature dish, a signature flavor that is something that is only available at your um, operation that consumers will then begin to associate with. And creating that signature is something that's so important. Um, we know over half of consumers tell us that they look forward to a signature dessert from a specific restaurant. And we know this is even higher among Gen Zers and millennials as well. Um, especially, we talked all throughout COVID that creating craveable dishes is the way to get consumers out of their house and into your restaurants. Having that craving, uh, that craveable dish on your menu is also more likely to be something that, especially as um, consumers are more conscious about the dollars that they're spending out, less likely to get cut because it is that item that drives craves. So especially in this world of kind of shrinking ticket average, this might be something that doesn't get cut from that ticket. So that's the end of my little part. Shameless plug, we have um, a webinar coming up on February 22nd. Um, that's all about menu pricing. Um, so Kevin will set, share these slides at the end. If not, you can take a screenshot of that QR code to register. That was awesome. I've got a couple of questions for you real quick. The sure. frozen novelty was in the second to last slide. Mm -hmm. uh, what do you categorize in that? Think of that like popsicles, dessert bars, basically frozen on a stick. Um, this starts to get into some of the blur of like, uh, like loaded milkshakes, monster drink, like monster milkshakes, things gotcha. like that. Yep. So any kind of incorporation of ice cream, gelato, sorbet and kind of bar form. Awesome. So, and then one other question too, of course, that's more of a comment, but probably can't tell by my shirt, but my shirt is an espresso martini shirt that my wife sees. How appropriate. I thought it was I love it. wear it. I didn't even know you were going to have that <laughs> slide in there, but I thought it was appropriate <laughs> with what's coming up next with Flavio. What I want to show you is the gelato versatility. Because the difference, uh, if you want, in flavor and the usability of gelato versus ice cream, we start with a classic affogato, which uh, usually is uh, vanilla gelato. You simply pour over the espresso. Of course, uh, the espresso is hot, the gelato is frozen, and uh, this interesting mi mixture between hot and cold is really compelling. Somebody likes to put some uh, heavy cream on top, and uh, I'm uh, in agreement with that. We are playing around with the affogato and with the four season, and this is the first one in spring, of course. And we have our strawberry sorbeto, super flavorful, super creamy. I put some strawberries on the bottom of the glass, and then I go with the, with our sorbeto, and I pull it out in this way. Very easy to scoop. The creamy uh, limoncello, it has a touch on that. And uh, as you can see, it is uh, complementing also with the color. And we finish uh, with a little bit of strawberry on top. And here we have our spring affogato with uh, strawberry and strawberry sorbet and creamy limoncello. So now we move to summer. 
And for summer, we have this spectacular flavor, which is a peach cobbler. Also here, we are going to scoop our peach cobbler in a glass. As you can see, there are nice inclusions inside. And here we have a sangria. So this is another twist, and we are going to put the sangria on top. And this is our super fresh and super tasty. And then we finish with some amaretto crumbles. But it is our summer peach cobbler and sangria affogato. For the fall, we are going now with some pecan nuts here. And then uh, there is our gelato, al parmigiano reggiano. I will uh, add uh, some uh, aceto balsamico, tradizionale di Modena. And we make uh, this affogato with uh, balsamico. And then, of course, uh, a touch of black pepper. We finally arrived to winter, and you know, in Italy, winter is panettone and pandoro, so the, these are minis. What I'm going to do is, the problem is, it's like a turkey, a Thanksgiving here, what you do the next day. So this is an idea for the next day, and uh, we cut a slice of panettone, and put it inside here. And then we have, uh, this uh, is one of my favorite flavor, is the birthday cake uh, of Jess Gelato. This is fantastic for kids, uh, for grab and go, but also to do something like this. So we go, we put our gelato inside here, and then hot chocolate. Kids are going to like it, and you too. A little bit of whiskey on top is not going to make you dislike it. This is everything for the affogato. Remember, gelato can be a, a sorbet, mostly, it can be a great asset for drinks. It just shows it. I mean, you could go with anything, right? I mean, even in the, you know, the, the like the fruits that you did and, yeah. you know, and, and doing that, I mean, that could change, you know, weekly, monthly or whatever, if you've got a pretty cool bar program. Yeah, it is. Well, you know, the, the thing about gelato, we already talked a little bit about that, uh, is um, beside the fact that it's um, becoming uh, so popular, as we have seen with Kelly before, but um, uh, the less content of fat, less content of air, and the warmer temperature is really bringing to life the flavor. Uh, Why, for example, not because I don't like ice cream, we make ice cream too, but uh, uh, ice cream is a... Uh, a lot more about the dairy uh, and the inclusions. Uh, here, uh, you, you really don't need uh, inclusion, inclusions or toppings. Sure, some swirl or some inclusion, they're, they're fine also with gelato, but uh, the basic flavor you want to express is all there. So with the fresh fruit, uh, with the dry fruit, uh, or with the uh, coffee, tiramisu, or, or chocolate. So that uh, makes uh, this preparation really enjoyable, really bold in flavor, uh, in the same time is velvety. And uh, because uh, the, the flavor is so well defined, it's also easier to, to pair it with, as we have seen, uh, I use the, the affogato as a tool to show the versatility, but uh, you know, we, just in the, in the Italian pantry, uh, traditional pantry, uh, Italian classic, uh, we have the spaghetti gelato, we have the brioche bun in Sicily that, that they fill with gelato for an afternoon snack. But I mean, for, for kids, uh, fast casual, casual dining can be great too. Um, yeah, to don't talk about the cannoli for, you, for you, the gelato. So there are many themes uh, where you can exploit uh, the, this delicious uh, Italian specialty. What is um, that gelato bun that you just mentioned, Flavio? Is that kind of like an ice cream sandwich? Is it sweet? Is it yeah, it's, it's like a, a brioche bun uh, stuff uh, with ice cream sandwich. So, but now, now there, there are also uh, these uh, restaurants which uh, are, uh, as uh, everybody is looking at the millennials uh, and the uh, Gen Zers, uh, they are so curious. Uh, they look, they love a bold flavor. So uh, some uh, res um, some gelato, uh, gelato shops in Italy start to make this specialty with uh, filling the bun with a salad and gelato. So we, obviously you need to be careful on the pairing, etc. But uh, 
Gelato, we see gelato in Italy as a meal, actually. It's more than a refreshing fun dessert. Uh, to Gelato da passeggio, famous. Uh, the, you go, you grab your gelato, you work with your friends, you enjoy it during the summer. But uh, it can is very nutritious, and uh, it can uh, we, we see we see that we can see that as a meal uh, when we make a, an application with the with the brioche bun or, or the or the brioche. Uh, where what in Italy in Italy we call bri- the croissant we call it, it as brioche as a little bit different formu- uh, formulation, but it is what, what I'm trying to say. So and, and then there is uh, this uh, trend of using uh, the gelato also for savory, uh, because uh, the, the well-defined flavor we have seen uh, Kelly was showing, uh, showing uh, about the gelato with asparagus. I did that in my time, uh, uh, and uh, but th- there are many other applications. And one of these is in the next video that uh, we are going to show. He has some popularity in Italy. It is a risotto with Amarone wine and uh, is topped with gelato al parmigiano. We are talking about gelato at 360 all across the menu. And this is uh, definitely an application for that. So we have our risotto here. Now we do the process, it's called mantecatura. We have the butter, very cold butter. And uh, what we're going to do is to make the risotto super creamy. We need to stir it. So this is an operation last uh, at least uh, five minutes. All the rice seeds, they are coming together uh, and they are ke- kept together by this uh, cream that we made uh, with wine and uh, broth. And now we're going to add the cheese. We let it rest a moment and then we are going to plate it. See how the risotto is very creamy. Put some risotto in the middle here. Then we use our scoop. We put the risotto parmigiano. We finish with a bit of black pepper. I want to add the final touch, which are these crumbles of amaretto. And here is our risotto al marone with gelato al parmigiano. That's awesome. That is really cool. I got to say, what's the other technique that I saw you know, when you were doing that is the pounding on the bottom of the plate to yeah, it's spread just out to flatten the, the rice. <laughs> That's that's genius. Is that a typical thing done, or is that just? Something? Yeah, yeah, it is. It is very popular technique to to make sure that the uh, rice spreads uniformly and uh, in a round fashion. Um, but you try the risotto with, with I mean, oh. you, you know, there is the contrast, uh, hot and cold. It is uh, interesting, I think, uh, and. Uh, I'm telling you, the, the gelato parmigiano has uh, many other savory gelato, and we can make those because Guido does this customization all the time. Uh, it is uh, it is really enjoyable, actually. So it sounds strange, but uh, it is it is not strange at all. It is, it is very enjoyable, very creamy, and complements perfectly with the risotto because it is there inside, essentially. So that was amazing, and I, and I loved how it just it oozed out. So of course you got the hot and the cold, right? So it oozed out. But the the saltiness, right, and the creaminess of that gelato was just, it was amazing. One of the barriers of using gelato in the restaurant is that the waiters, they don't have the time. And, and, and so if it's not at the right temperature, it takes a while to scoop it out. So they complain at the end that they, they try to don't sell it. So it is. This is this is a solution for that problem. It is easy to use, uh, is easy to manage uh, as inventory. There is no waste. Uh, it's operationally friendly, and uh, what we offer is uh, it, it is great for grab and go. So we can customize the flavor. We can uh, with, with the volume, obviously, uh, but uh, we can uh, also uh, brand the the containers. Uh, and uh, so the idea solution for, for us, uh, what we are proposing for ca- uh, casual dining, fast casual, is mine, uh, minis and pints. The pints because uh, uh, to grab and go or bring home. 
and uh, the mini uh, they can be used uh, 360 for uh, beverage uh, we have seen uh, many application in beverage uh, they can be used uh, uh, as a dessert uh, they can be used for kids uh, you can compose like a uh, uh, for a table with a uh, birthday cake uh, you can make a cake out of that and uh, as i said they are very easy to uh, to maintain to use uh, and uh, operationally my name is Bryce. I'm the uh, director of food service sales for GS Gelato. So uh, really what I wanted to show you guys today was some of the pack sizes that we uh, are currently packing in right now. Everything from the single serve, which we have the, the existing three flavors, uh, all the way through the pints, scrounds, quarts, twin packs. Uh, and then we get back into food service flavors again with our soft serve. That's a four one gallon case. The round tubs is in a four pack uh, currently. We do have one flavor uh, of that stocked at Dot Foods. And then our five liter style pan, that's going to be our bread and butter. That's where the bulk of our products are going to be uh, packed and shipped through uh, via Dot Foods uh, in that five liter style pan. The nice part about that pan is it's a very thick walled, durable plastic pan uh, with a flat top lid. So they stack easily, they store easily. And uh, for size sake and comparison sake, it's basically a one third deep pan. So uh, if you do have a dipping cabinet, if you're looking to do a dipping cabinet, if you're looking to do hand dipping, the nice part is you take that pan, it will insert directly into the cabinet for you and make it nice and easy. So um, they also make great storage containers. We use them here for our shows and all kinds of stuff uh, when, uh, when they're done. So. Uh, these are all the pack sizes that we have. And then when we look into the flavors that we're putting into those, it was interesting seeing uh, the slides from Data Essentials and their flavors versus what we're seeing as well. It's a, it's a very close comparison. So obviously our top flavors are going to be our classics. Um, we see a lot of the gelatos up there. And then we also have our mango sorbet, which has been a, a surprisingly growing flavor. So that's been taking off for us quite nicely. We do currently pack uh, three different vanillas um, in our food service packs. The round tubs in the four pack uh, is a Madagascar vanilla. And then we have our Indonesian and uh, Tahitian vanillas as well. So lots of options are very different products. Um, and then on our emerging flavors, it's great to see again from, uh, from the slides we saw earlier, you know, I saw biscotti, limoncello, uh, the pistachio, you know, a lot of those were on there as well. So these have been uh, great flavors that are showing really strong growth in the marketplace. Um, if you would like to see any of the data behind these, I would be happy to go through it with you um, together. So uh, we're very proud of our uh, emerging flavors. They're, they're really pulling their weight and throwing punches for us. But really where the strength of GS Gelato comes in, aside from the quality of our products and the strength of our distribution network, is in how we service our accounts. Um, so we are very strong in our research and development, as Simona said. So we have had customers come to us with challenges for different products, different pack sizes, uh, different colors, different dietary restrictions. And how do we do that and fit into their menus and into their stores or restaurants or locations? And uh, it is not very often that we are unable to deliver the solution that the customer is looking for. So um, it's, it's a really fun and exciting process to be a part of. I am not a chef. I don't claim to be a chef. I love to see it from the outside and, and hear those conversations and learn more about uh, the products and how they're made. Um, but we are incredibly strong in the research and development. So if we're looking for something very specific or unique, like an asparagus gelato, uh, Guido has been pushing incredibly hard for a very long time for me to find someone to buy a salmon sorbet. Um, so, you know, there, there is really no shortage of what we can do in the R and D side, uh, to fit needs. And then on the support side, uh, we're incredibly strong in that as well. So we do have our na uh, national distribution via Dot Foods. Um, they've been a great partner of ours for a long time. Uh, we're very strong with Dot. Currently have 42 different SKUs stocked uh, with another seven as special order. Uh, and then we do have a couple other ones that will be set up as special order with Dot as well. 
Um, Year-round dedicated support sounds kind of goofy being uh, in the USA, but not all gelato manufacturers operate year-round. Some of them are very seasonal. Uh, We are, in fact, open year-round. We operate year-round and we support our customers year-round. So um, we offer on-site and virtual training. So if you're looking for a train the trainer kind of program, if we need to come into corporate offices and make presentations to sales teams, to your franchise teams, to franchisees, you know, those are all part of the things that we can do. And we have very strong equipment programs as well. So we are currently working with three different uh, equipment distributors. We have negotiated costs with them, anything from the small mini cup cabinets that are on the countertop to large 24 flavor dipping cabinets that are imported from Italy and ventilated machines uh, to make beautiful built up displays. Uh, to soft serve equipment as well. So we're very strong on our equipment programs. We're very thankful for our partners in that space that help us close that circle of service with with, uh, you guys, our customers. Uh, And then we also have a great supplies and marketing program. So Gelato uh, needs to be respected and needs to be treated with respect. And part of that is uh, displaying it and serving it properly. So uh, not a lot of distributors carry the Uh, unique uh, paper and and plastic goods that go with a gelato offering. So we work with dropship partners to close the circle there to make sure that, you know, you, you are able to deliver an authentic gelato experience to your customers. And then obviously we've got Stephanie offering unparalleled uh, marketing support. So we've been known to do custom wraps on cabinets and help out with any of the uh, marketing needs that you guys may have to uh, you know, help these programs take off. And, and our goal is really to make sure that you are all aware of what gelato is and how special it is to us and that we can communicate that effectively to uh, your franchisees or your locations as well as um, at the store level to your customers. So we try to make it really easy to run that through um, that chain of, of purchases. So, you know, I've got a couple of things and Kelly, you may want to jump in as well. Is there anything you've got first? Um, just kind of on that single serve pack. I think that that's something we've seen come up a ton, especially post COVID to help with labor shortages, to help with portion control and waste. And especially as we've seen this back of house staff become less skilled, it's a great way to kind of compensate for some of that. Um, and I think a lot of operators tell us that, yes, it's worth that. You get, you'll get, you see, you might pay more for it, but you see a cost savings in the long run in terms of waste, um, food waste and kind of quality control that it just in peace of mind that it affords. So, Yeah, that's cool. And to follow up on that, Bryce, it might be a good one for you or, or you know, or Simona or whomever. But um, that little freezer, the mini freezer you have, talk about how, what's the size of it? What's the dimensions? It's tiny, right? Yeah, yeah, they're they're relatively small. I want to say they're about 15 inches wide. You know, they're not counter deep, so they're probably 20 inches deep and maybe another 24 to 28 inches tall. Um, I'm happy to send out all the specs on any of the equipment that we're currently representing. Um, But we also, you know, the manufacturers that we work with also have full lines that, you know, are more unique than, uh, than what we're offering. So that's cool. I think that's totally, totally cool. Yeah, if there are, you know, crazy unique needs that are off of our program, you know, connect you with the right people and make it easy. Awesome. Well, yeah, they're well, also great for, it is like an easy sale, you know, it, they are on the counter there. I'm sure the kids that they want to pick it up or, or bring some home. And that is why we are proposing both the, the minis and, and the pints. So. And I love the segue of what you've done, too. So, I mean, no matter what, I mean, right now, beverage, and that's the thing we've talked about, you know, with all of us together, but Kelly as well, is, you know, the beverage programs are growing like crazy. I mean, it's one of those profitable areas that restaurants of all different types, even fast casuals, are getting more into it um, because it's something where, you know, give something something unique, people are going to buy it, and you're going to end up, you can charge a heck of a lot of money for something if you have quality ingredients involved. Sure. So I just see that as a great growth area. Some uh, some of our clients, uh, uh, for example, talk about customization. We are uh, very strong on that side. 
And for example, one of the most recent, recent flavors we developed is uh, this avocado gelato, which is a nightmare to make it, but uh, is uh, I tried it with a smoked salmon. It's amazing. And one of our clients is actually making a, a tuna tartare uh, topped with a, uh, an avocado gelato. So I can see in that area, especially in the appetizer area, I think uh, it, it, it is something that has a lot of potential. Yeah, I totally agree. So does anybody have any final thoughts you want to share with us before, unfortunately, we're out of time and we got to go to our closing video? Um, I did just want to call out uh, for any resources that you just want to quickly take a glance at. If you haven't visited our website yet, we have a dedicated page for GCIA members. So if you just go to gsgelato.com slash GCIA, um, there's recipe ideas in there. There's packaging options with all the specifications. There's um, just our company catalog that basically goes through everything that we talked about today in a little more detail. And then if there's anything that's not answered on there, um, there's contact information. And um, I think it's specifically contact information for uh, for Bryce, if I'm not mistaken. So for everything that he said that he had, <laughs> you can get his, his information there as well. Um, and then uh, we will be sending out a link, I believe, through through Kevin um, to if you would like to try one of those four seasonal affogados, uh, we'll put together a, a sample pack for you to do so, just to play around and, and experiment. We're lucky to have Flavio because those look amazing. Oh, thank you.